Good morning, folks. Just taking a look at this disclaimer. It's important. Reminding you that what I'm saying is just my opinion. Don't believe a word I say. <laughs> okay. We are looking at the Australian dollar. And on the left-hand side is a daily chart, and on the right-hand side, it's the 15-minute time frame. And a few days ago, I gave you a optimal trade entry uh, pattern recognition video for your learning. You guys can use that for your uh, practicing, seeing it, watching it quickly, very short span of time and price action. That way, you can see what the pattern looks like over and over and over again. Only by doing that or by making your own charts every day and putting them into like a journal, screen capturing the chart, okay, and as soon as you think you see the optimal trade entry, screen capture that and then watch it pan out. It may or may not be there, okay, but over time, your ability to be able to see it will improve. Now, today, I want to talk about selecting precision price objectives. In other words, where the price may go, okay, so we've talked about um, how to get a daily bias real quick uh, and I'll review that so that way everything's kind of like uniform as we go through each video there's not a plethora of things to know but there's a lot of things to learn but for trading um, practicing in your demo account uh, there are certain things that I think is beneficial to students of mine even if you don't really pursue everything that's in my curriculum or, or tutelage uh, I promise you there's always something out of the 20 some plus years I've been doing this uh, invariably I find uh, even that seasoned traders will send me feedback and say hey look you know that was really interesting that's really filled in a gap in my understanding or it's done wonders for my results and that's great I appreciate that type of feedback but today we're gonna look at the Australian dollar and then I'll kind of recap with uh, the British pound so for teaching purposes we're going to start off on the daily okay and i want to bring your attention to this little candle right here okay and the first thing we look at is are we working off of a swing a swing high or a swing low now currently if you look at this candle here this one would probably throw up throw most of you off that aren't really simply looking at the pattern as a generic form in other words a candle that has a higher low on either side of it that's a swing low as it really as it relates to this one here we have a low on this candle here we have a lower low then we have a higher low skipping the candle right here why am i skipping that well it's because it's a sunday candle okay so this candle right here kind of like just dis disregard it dismiss it don't think it's there at all um, if you have a platform that doesn't have sunday candles you are at an advantage because i'm teaching through a forex ltd demo so the price action you're seeing here is directly related to the fee they provide. And admittedly, the last couple weeks, uh, they've had some pickups in their data. So take it for what it is. Okay, I just use it because it has a dollar index. And dollar index, in my opinion, is important when we do analysis. But if we disregard this candle right here, we have the pattern, which is the swing low. We have a, a lower low here than the candle before and the candle after it. Okay. Once we have that, our thought process is to look for price to want to target runs on liquidity above the previous day's high. It's just that simple. Okay, I'm not going to be teaching IPTA, which is the Interbank Price Delivery Algorithm. Uh, it's a unique thing in my uh, repertoire, my curriculum, my teachings. And no one else talks about it. it's not in books or anything like that and I'm not teaching you every facet to it because that was in my mentorship stuff so uh, those folks are the only ones I'm gonna share it with they know it and I'm not teaching anymore but I will give you a very simple approach and a very foundational approach on how you can look for setups and we've already done so by teaching this but I'm kind of re rehashing it here so that way it's in one video it's, it's uniform so you can see everything in one short little video so we have a swing low and then the expectation is, is the algorithm that the price engines use for delivering price to all of our feeds 
Now there's going to be a, a slight skew in what price we see and what is actually on the interbank level. I'm not going to get into that. Just understand that there's always going to be some slight variance between what you're using to trade with and what I'm showing. Okay, everyone's broker is going to have a slightly different quote high, quote low. It goes along with the territory. You sign it in the risk disclosure saying that you are willing to work within those guidelines and it's legal. Sorry, I hate to say it, but you give them permission to do so. So the high, we're going to start targeting and looking for moves above it, the previous day's high. So once this candle closes, we have a swing low. Okay, disregard this candle right here. Okay. Now the next day, we're going to be looking for price to trade above this candle's high. It does so. Okay. Now the next day, we're going to look for the same phenomenon to take place. We're going to look for the previous day's high to be traded through. Okay, we open. I'm not talking about power three today. I'm not doing anything like that. But we're looking for an eventual run above the previous day's high. This is foundational for directional bias for day trading. Now, I'm only focusing this project, if you want to call it, on day trading only. I'm not teaching you swing trading. I'm not teaching you position trading or anything like that. This is all just day trading information. You can see price runs through that previous day's high. Okay, the same drill the next day. Nothing's changed. We're waiting to see an eventual run through the previous day's high. It does that. Now, is it giving you the low of the day to get in? No, that's not its function. That's not its purpose. This concept's responsibility really is just to give you where is price most likely, not panacea, not be all end all, not an absolution, most likely going to direction high or low. Well, we know that we're going to be focusing on the market wanting to go above the previous day's high. So that gives us a directional bias on the day. Now, there's going to be fluctuations intraday, and I'm sure 30 different scalpers out there will say, well, you had this wrong because I took 12 pips going short on this. That's, that's up you know, to you to think that way, and I'm not going to try to say what you're doing is wrong. If it's working for you, great. I'm just sharing my internalization of what price action means to me, and I'll leave it all to you whether you think it's valuable or not. Okay, I, I really don't care to know if you think what I'm doing is good or bad. I just want to know how you're using it. Okay, and give me that feedback. That's the only thing I care about. So we're going to use this information and translate that into what we see on the 15 minute time frame on the Aussie. Now, again, I'm going to refer you back to the optimal trade entry pattern recognition video I did uh, for Aussie Dollar. It's in the title, so you can see it on my YouTube channel. But we talked about this high here and this low right here. Okay. This framework right here, this break in that range, this low to high, once it was broken right here, okay, once price traded to that point here, that gives us an inclination that maybe, perhaps, the market may want to trade higher. If it does, then this phenomenon I just outlined on the daily chart should manifest itself in price action. If it doesn't, then there's no trade or you'll suffer a loss. There's nothing wrong with that. Yesterday I showed there's a, no reason to be fearful of taking a loss. Your method's still going to work if you have a sound method and you just have to execute and keep risk small and don't let the, the demons of price action and trading and speculation overcome you and worry you. Don't let it scare you out of taking the next trade, but don't overtrade too. So there's a lot of balancing act in that. So we're going to look at this high right here. Let me get this little trend line thing here. So when we see this right here, this gets us on the watch list of determining whether or not this whole effect is going to manifest itself. Okay, in other words, we're looking for reasons to suspect the directional bias should start panning out for upward momentum seeking liquidity above the previous day's trading high or daily high. So we have the short-term high broken right here. So now what we want to do is we want to apply our Fibonacci. Not that Fibonacci is the answer to anything, but it helps as a crutch for new traders to see areas of valuation. And I taught you to use the bodies of the candles, not the wicks, because that's where everyone's 
price action is going to be different. So I focus primarily on the, the bulk of the volume being inside the body of the candle. Okay, that's the reason why I'm choosing to do that. So we have this model here. Okay, this whole framework of, of price swing, this is an impulse price swing or impulse price leg, they're interchangeable terms. When price trades back down to the 62% tracement level, 70.5 level, or 79% level, that gives us an area to anticipate potential buying opportunities. So we have buys down here likely to form, and obviously you have the benefit of hindsight here, but we have targets of target one, we have the old high, which is your first scale out. So this is where you take your first scaling and adjust your stop to reduce risk. Then here's your next target here, target one, then target two, and then there's a symmetrical price swing. Okay. As price unfolds, reaching for previous day's high and the seeking the liquidity above each respective previous day's high, each time it does that, you need to be looking to take profits because at some point, this whole dynamic over here on the daily could potentially change. So you always have to be mindful of, for instance, if we have a day, for instance, tomorrow, say we have a day that creates a lower high. Well, that changes the whole directional bias now, doesn't it? We would switch gears and start looking for reasons to see a run on the previous day's low for the liquidity resting below that. So it gives us a framework. At some point, we are potentially going to be wrong. Like anything else in trading, you're going to have a losing trade. You're going to have a series of losing trades. And you can't fight that. If you try to do that, it's going to mess you up. Just simply follow the rules. Be willing to take a loss because the loss will give you insight. It just means you're paying a premium for that valuable information. Something has changed internally, especially if you see a, a day that has a lower high. Now you have a swing high. And then you'd look for reasons to start looking for price breaking the, below the previous day's low. Now, if it doesn't do that after the formation of the daily swing high, then we may be consolidating or it could be just a retracement to go higher again. And once we take out the swing high that formed its high, then everything resumes back in this uh, model where we start looking for runs on previous day's highs or old highs, which would be the case over here. Okay, Real simple way of approaching building a daily bias. It's the closest thing I can give you that can be written on the back of a business card that is so good it blows the doors off of most retail stuff Okay, because it gives you a real quick way of internalizing from an institutional standpoint where liquidity is and how, this, how to determine what side of the marketplace it's going to target. All right, so now I'm going to maximize this chart over here. Okay, and you can see this is the chart that we shared on that video. And we've just fallen short of target two over here and started having a deep retracement. It does not mean that the model on the daily chart, when it does this, that the daily model or what we're looking for for daily bias going higher, this doesn't change that. Okay, what we had is, is we have a consolidation, a rally up, target two didn't get hit, no problem. We have a retracement and then it sells off again. I want you to look at this portion of price action right in here. If we're bullish, as we were indicating on the daily chart, I'm going to change the color of this rectangle, let me see. If we have, uh, let's go with this. And this is it, not, make that a little bit of background. All right, so inside this whole consolidation, we had one run above these highs, got people trapped, chasing longs on breakouts, okay? In other words, trade, if you watch the technical analysis uh, videos on YouTube or Red Books, they'll teach us as a bull flag. It rallies up, consolidates, starts to run higher. It's probably going to do the same move from this low up to the high, added to the low and projected up. They got burned there, okay? That's why I'm not a real big fan of traditional technical analysis because they're used many times to manipulate the thought processes or build sentiment that many times is the incorrect perception of what price is most likely going to do. So we have a consolidation. We have a false move here or break above old highs. They sell off of that and they run back down below what side of the marketplace? Below the consolidation lows. That's right here. Now, 
if we have the understanding or expectation that the daily chart is predisposed to move higher each trading day looking for its respective previous day's high to be taken out, we have a bias that means it's most likely going to go higher. So anytime we drop down, our thought process should be switching to, okay, it's probably going down to knock out weak bulls or trip in rushing bears. Folks that want to get in on a break below these lows. Okay, if you look at indicators in here, and I'll just throw one up here just for the, the amusement of it. Um, from using these highs to this high here, momentum indicators, and this is really big on Facebook and, and, and folks that use that kind of stuff to convince their spectators that they have a, uh, a bead on what price is doing. You're going to see a divergence in here. And we'll just use that as a good setup. All right. We have a high here and a high here. A slightly lower high here. But in, even on this run to this candle failure, if we use a percent, it's slightly different. Let's do this. Just 14 percent. Oh, I'm sorry, 14K period. And we'll smooth with, let's, let's go ahead and smooth it with that. Anytime price comes down below old lows, if you want to use a momentum indicator, that means like stochastic, I like stochastic, um, RSI can't stand it, um, MACD is so smooth unless you're using it for long, long, long term position trading, uh, I don't think it's beneficial either unless you use the histogram. And again, I'm not trying to teach indicators, but I would be very safe in betting that the new crowd that has just started following me uses things like this on their charts, okay, and they're looking for overbought and oversold. If you blend what I'm going to show you here, you're going to see that the indicators work then. And that's the times when we see them in textbooks, when they work and it's favorable to have been a follower of that perception. Uh, that's what tricks people. That's what tricked me when I first started trading. But it doesn't give you the context on when to use the indicator. You know, they'll, they'll tell you when the moving averages are going up, it's a bull market, so they look for the bullish divergence. Well, sometimes that works, and sometimes it doesn't. So if we know what we're looking for in terms of how the market will reach for liquidity, as I defined on the daily chart, we know that that's what we should be focusing on. Any other retracements of any kind, until it changes the tune or storyline that's on the daily chart, everything going down on the lower time frames is simply new buying opportunities. It's going down to screw up the mindsets of those individuals watching one and five minute charts. Because if they see moves like this, they're going to think right away, it's going lower. So therefore, be short. And traders that want a lot of confirmation behind their ideas, they will have sell stops triggered right below here because they don't trust what, what's going on. They just want to follow the rushing tide. So if price starts to break down as it does below here, they're short. Well, they see a momentary profitability. I'll, I'll say it like that, quote unquote. But right away, it's taken away from them and snatched and drawn against them in another direction. This whole move here was not by coincidence. It's not by uh, you know randomness. And it also comes by way of a bullish divergence. There's where your bullish divergence works in momentum indicators. We're extremely oversold and we're below old lows. Okay, so what I'm actually giving you is a perception on where price will go to a point to take out long holders. Now think, if they were lucky enough to buy over here, they've held through this whole period of time, and they watched it drop down to right where their stop loss would have been. Because the textbooks teach this is a double bottom. So as price ran up, where would they have placed their stop loss on their long position? Right below there. So when we see drops or declines against the higher time frame daily chart that is giving us clues that it's most likely going to go higher than the previous day's high, anytime we drop down below old lows, that's most likely a stop run. And you can anticipate that. And if you haven't taken a position yet, you can buy just on the basis of that alone. So I'm giving you a little bit of blending on how you can use the retail crutches that are available but using them in the right concepts and, and, and time, using proper context. So we're going to take this nonsense off. We're going to go right back to price action. So now we had this consolidation, a false run above, and then make a run on long holders. 
Notice how after they've taken the stop losses away and out of the hands of the long holders that were maybe from over here. Maybe someone got lucky and bought it down here. I don't know. I don't care to know. All I know is, is when it has equal lows like this and the market's predisposed to go higher, that's going to be what I call candy land. Okay, they're going to go down here and take those stops away from them. Imagine you want to get somewhere, okay, and the bus is full, but you're a big, strong guy, okay, you're a bully. You can go on that bus, snatch somebody out of their seat, throw them onto the street, and then take their seat over. Well, that's what the market makers do. You had your seat on the bus. You've been getting closer to your destination. You get real close to the destination. Oh, we got a detour. Can't go any further. Okay, we come back down here. When we get to this point here, start to go a little bit higher. You feel like you're getting somewhere? No. We go another detour in the bad section of the neighborhood, okay, and the guy comes in, knocks you off the bus, and takes your seat, and then ultimately goes where you want to go ultimately, but you can't get there. So you've given up profit, and you've given up your seat on the bus, and you never got to the destination you were intended to go. So that's the storyline I teach kind of like with my kids to make it palatable so you can see it a little bit in price because looking at it like this, it's abstract. But when you apply things to understand why the price is doing it, the mechanics behind it, that's what it is. Okay. Uh, now, if we see these things happen, okay, I've given you the body-to-body -body measurements for FIB and the targets being first profit, scaling, target one, target two, and symmetrical price swing. Okay. I'm going to apply a little bit more information to save some time because I did a little bit more jawboning today than I wanted to. And I want to go back out to that same information just with all of the kill zones and such applied. So now we're going to go back in and apply the FIB real quick. Doesn't take long to do it. this real quick while I'm thinking about it. All right. So in the bodies, low and up to the body here. Okay, so we have that same reference point. Target two failed here, didn't get to it, just fell short, retraced, and then we have symmetrical price swing. If I add our little arrow things that MT4 provides us, I can quickly add where the price objectives would be. At first scaling was 77.82. First target, 77.94. Target two, and symmetrical price swing, okay, or measured move. That's based on these entries here. Now, in here, this whole portion of that consolidation and that false break, again, internalize that shaded area I had on the chart that I just had previously before changing to this perspective and we're going to watch this decline here this drop down from this high what is it retracing from what's the what's the beginning of the price move is it here 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 it's here why am I going to use this low I get this all the time. Why am I going to put a Fibonacci on this low and not this one and not this one? Because this one has the most recent dynamic price action on the upside. So the bulk of the buying was right in here. So I'm going to use another Fib. I'm going to anchor it on the body. Right there. And I'm putting it on the body high right there. Right there. That's the highest body portion of this leg. Now, I'm not using this candle's wick. I'm using this one here. That's the highest body, okay, prior to this high being broken. Otherwise, I would use this one. But look what happens. We have 62% retracement level right there, okay? So we could expect price to drop down. What changes 
this range high when when these highs are taken out right there so you have to modify the, the range that you're trading inside of so it's this low now not to this bulk of the volume or the candles high not the wicks we're using we're using the body of the candle so now we have to adjust it to this candles body it's the highest one in the range now this high to this low what happens now not much in terms of optimal trade entry it just gives us a, a more refined area and still has a buy at that same point but it goes right to 70.5 which is a sweet spot on optimal trade entry price hits that during what time of day what time of day is this if i show it to you like that fomc that's an fomc came out okay so if we see this we know that that big rush of in, uh, injection of volatility coming in by way of FOMC minutes, it can cause either continuation or a reversal. In this case, we watched it drop down ahead of FOMC, and then when the minutes came out, boom, the price continues on the path of what was already outlined earlier in the week by using the Fibonacci and using what I taught you for the daily chart. When there's a swing low, look for previous day's highs to be taken out. Now, if that's the case we should see other things lining up with targets so i'm going to scroll over just a little bit more okay so now we have today's price action so we already knew that this is a symmetrical price swing objective and that was in video before the fact i already showed you how to use the daily chart to determine what direction it was going in these are static targets they didn't move they're not dynamic okay this one here had to be slightly dynamic because we had a break in this range so it created a larger price range to trade inside of. So this low to this high, trading inside the range, my concept, down here, small, small little retracement, back down into an area where we would expect to see buying. Okay, so now if that's the case, should we be looking for these objectives from this original buy to come to fruition? Yes, because they were not realized when they first started to move higher. It never reached it yet. So they're open-ended targets. They stay in price action. So we can do this. Extend that out in time. Bang. Hits it today beautifully. The target two level right there. Hits it last night before midnight, New York time. Okay. And then obviously you guys can see target one and first profit was hit no problem. Now I'm going to show you a blending with the Fibonacci. Okay, and I'm going to take this Fib off. And I want you to look at this price move right here. See that price leg? We're going to measure that one, and we're going to measure this one. Because we have an impulse leg, and we have a parent impulse leg. That means this high to this low is the, the parent price swing. But there are subordinate price swings inside that larger move. In other words, an example would be, since this move from here to here is the most dominant price leg, every price leg can be broken down into smaller price legs or fractals. So if the retracement is the fractal we're going to define, okay, inside that retracement, there's going to be smaller retracements of a lesser degree. This high down to this low is another smaller move of that. This high to that low is another... Uh, micro price range this is a micro price range from this high to this low here's another one this high to this low and how they nest out builds market structure as you'll learn in my tutorials but for now i want you to take a look at what we get when we use the fibonacci not changing anything low on the bodies up to the bodies high right here okay symmetrical price swing there's your target for more of a higher objective with more refinement and precision, we used a parent price swing, as I just outlined. The low based on the bodies, the high based on the bodies, smack dab on it. You can't get any cleaner than that range right there. So that's target two. If we break this, we would be looking for 78.45 as the next upside objective. But right now, that is beautiful. That's a beautiful example of precision objectives using the FIB, using the directional bias, and it also 
overlaps very handsomely with the 7828 that was already arrived at way back here on the 6th of October. That was really confirmed with the response on optimal trade entry here and price moving up like that. We know that these objectives were most likely going to be in play, potentially there. It doesn't mean that it's going to stop. You can't go any higher than uh, 78.28 just means that these are reasonable price objectives and as price moves up into that you want to be taking profits because you don't know if either one of these are going to cause a situation like this where we have a deeper retracement where they come back down to take out long holders to unseat their position and take that position over so they can ride to the profitable objective but that this is one element in how I use for my targeting now admittedly and my mentorship knows this as well because I preach it. If this is the objective I'm looking for, ultimately, or 78, I'm not, yeah, 78, 28, I'm not holding for that. Now, I'll tell people that that's where it's going to go. And to new traders, they hone in on just that. And they don't pay attention to the trade examples I show where I'm clearly getting out 15 and 20 pips before that. Now, to the pundits and people that are just really not interested in learning, they just want to be detractors. They'll say he doesn't follow his method. He doesn't practice what he preaches. No, I practice what I preach in regards to how my trading is. I get out early. That's my model. Because I have seen many times, just like this, I was, it just failed short, fell short of the target two. So if I would have held on to that with my trailing stop loss here on my full profit, not taking anything out, I would have been stopped out here not getting out at a really good place and also getting knocked out too that's a kind of like a double slap in the face i want to be getting out when the momentum is moving in my favor so in this case if i'm looking for 78 28 to 78 30 i want to be out at 78 20 78 15 and i'll leave everybody else on facebook and instagram and on twitter to say that this is where they got out at but i'll tell you that that's where the market's going to be drawn to but will i be in it the entire time 90% of the time, no, unless I'm purposely, like I did in the past, and I'm trying not to do this, but I tried to show off in the past and show I can hold the position right to the last point. And sometimes it works, and it turns you into a superhero, okay, and you've got an S on your chest. But it doesn't mean that I'm trading that with live funds and holding it to the last position uh, exit point, because I'm not doing that. I'm looking to get out sometimes 15 to 20 pips early, and I'm content with that. There's much more consistency with doing that if you're looking for objectives than that of holding for the full profit potential because your ego needs that stroking or you need to feel like you were right by doing that you're not incorrect if you get out early and price goes to that price point because this is what led me to believe that price would go to that point this objective this unfulfilled price objective is what's drawing price higher why the algorithm will look for liquidity to a certain degree of price range. And I'm not going to teach all that here, but long and short, it is, it's a repeating phenomenon. And just with the Fibonacci, it's easy for me to communicate that visually. And it gives you a very easy way of digesting at least what I'm saying and not look like I'm just pulling things out of thin air. Because there is a rhyme and rhythm, rhythm to how these markets move. They're predetermined. And they have a scale they work within. And until like non-farm payroll or FOMC or an unrelated uh, event like a terrorist attack or a war uh, scenario, they are pretty much you know locked inside of a parameter. Okay, they're not going to limit. Uh, they're not going to expose the entire economic uh, infrastructure to collapse on the basis of randomness. It just it doesn't work that way. Okay, so. I'm going to end this portion about the Aussie dollar, and I'm going to go over to cable real quick and finish this presentation up for today. Um, we talked about the British pound being bullish, and I gave you an example of uh, how it was going to run above the previous day's highs. In the same scenario here, um, we'll go and add the horizontal line here. This was the previous day's high on Tuesday for Wednesday's trading. We traded through that, and my exit point was right in here. Then we had a little bit of retracement. And then at the five-minute mark, okay, at the five-minute mark, actually, let's do this. Let me zoom in. 
this level here, 132.60. Okay, if you go into my optimal trade entry, uh, failed optimal trade entry video for uh, cable, and you see where I actually um, mitigate the loss, at the five minute mark, you'll see me actually adjust my take profit to that level, just kind of like giving you an anchor so I can come back to it today. I admittedly told you I collapsed the trade because I'm not trying to teach swing trading. I'm not trying to teach short-term trading or one-shot, one-kill. I'm not teaching that. You have to learn that from my tutorials. When we're together daily, okay, it's just focusing on day trades. And if it doesn't suit you, I understand. You don't, there's no need to give me. I don't really interested in it. I don't really. I don't want to read negative feedback, okay? Because really, you're just going to turn me off. I'm just going to mute you on Twitter. I just don't have time for it. Um, that doesn't mean I'm wanting to be glad hand and, and stroked and fucked up on my ego. I just want to know, is what I'm sharing helping you? If it's not, I don't want to know about it. I really don't care. But I want you to see that this level was placed in as a target just to kind of like nudge my mentorship and also to let you dig a little bit deeper as to what this level is. Now, I'm not asking you guys to share on Twitter, especially you guys in my mentorship. Do not talk about this stuff. But this level, 3260, was adjusted as a take profit. It wasn't randomly selected. It was placed there for a reason. But I want you to now just look at just forget the reasons why it was used for right now. Because if you go through the tutorials, you'll get very close to the reason why that was done. Today's trading, we had the Asian range, which is defined here's Asian range high, Asian range low. And price comes out of the Asian range and doesn't go above the Asian range high, but rolls over. Okay, and then we have a nice retracement up right here. What do you think that is? What do you think this is right here? Bodies to the body. See how the body, the candle stayed inside optimal trade entry? 62, 70.5, 79. But Michael, this spiked through. Yeah, it did. So what? That's not where your stop's going to be at. Your stop's not going to be there. Your stop's going to be referenced over here on the anchor point. This move is your London setup. Here's your London open kill zone down here. Let me zoom in a little bit so you guys can get a better perspective. But look what level it's keying off of. 3260. Okay, 3260 was the level to take profit at. And then it becomes an inversion level where the next setup takes place. So I'm going to leave you with that portion of price action to study. What's so significant? about 132.60, why it was a catalyst for take profits, and why did the market turn around at that level and show a London open kill zone, sell with optimal trade entry right at that level, and look at the reaction there. Hopefully you found this insightful. I will catch up with you guys again. There will not be a live session tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to be doing some things with my son at his school, so I will not be able to do that. But I'll resume next week with you guys. Enjoy your weekend. Be safe, and until next time, I wish you good luck and good trading.